So what we've seen so far is a single core storage hierarchy with a single computational unit. And typically how this is organized on the board is something like that. So you have L1, L2 and L3 and they sit in the same CPU. That's the unit, that's the device you actually put on the CPU socket on the specific board. That would be the CPU containing all of this. Then there's a board. The board contains main memory as well as the CPU. And then somehow outside attached to that are the hard disks or the tape if you are using other levels. Well, but this of course is not, or it's rarely used these days because what we are seeing are multi-core hierarchies and this may look like this. So on a single CPU, you have four cores. So another way to phrase that, it's like four computational units. Each core has its own registers and each core has its own L1 cache and the L2 cache. So basically you have all of this replicated four times inside the same CPU. So there are multiple reasons for having a separate L1 cache. One is, of course, if two cores shared the same L1 cache, you would have to log the access to the data that would be too expensive and would slow down the machine dramatically. The second reason is the distance, the physical distance to the core is very limited and therefore it's not easy to build a shared L1 cache among two different cores. So you have separate L1 and L2 caches for each core and then there's typically a shared L3 cache. Again, you have this inclusion property that L2 should be included in L3, but L3 is now sharing data among the different cores. It might happen that if some data is not available in L1 and not available in L2, this core may check L3 for that particular data. So another thing is here, main memory, of course, this is again sitting on the board and then there is the flash and hard disk as before. So the major changes, I, I go again back, you have this unit here, this CPU is internally extended to accommodate for four cores plus an L1 and an L2 cache each. Well, that's one way of uh, designing a multi-core architecture. What's more common these days are so-called NUMA architectures, non-uniform memory access. And that means the board contains two CPUs, each CPU having four cores each. So it's like before. Here we only had one CPU with four cores. Now we have two of them. And another major change is that we have two banks of main memory, two banks of DRAM. And here it's important to understand that you may have different access times depending on which CPU is accessing which memory. So again, if a core is accessing some L1, that may take four cycles if it's there. If it's in L2, it takes 10 cycles. So if the data sits in L3 and is not shared with other cores, you can access this in 40 cycles. If it's shared for reading with other cores, it takes about 65 cycles. If that data sitting in L3 was modified in another core, then it takes 75 cycles. What also is possible here is a remote access to L3. So one of those cores may also access an L3 in another CPU. This takes about 100 to 300 cycles, so it's already getting slower. Then there are other differences in the storage hierarchy, that is whether the DRAM, whether the main memory, sits locally at the CPU or not. So there's a better connection here than it is crosswise. This is not so great, this connection, which means if none of the caches has a data and one of the cores accesses the data, it takes 60 nanoseconds to fetch it locally. 60 nanoseconds, uh, be it from this CPU, to, to this main memory or from this CPU to that main memory, it's 60 nanoseconds. But you can also access data from here from the other main memory and that takes a little longer. That would be 100 nanoseconds. This would be, that would be this edge basically. It's about 100 nanoseconds, 100 nanoseconds. So it's a difference whether the data is available in the local main memory in the NUMA architecture or in that main memory that's a little further away.
For this, again, it's the same distance, of course. It's five milliseconds. So these architectures are very common these days, NUMA architectures. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel Jens Did, or you look at our website infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.